In this video, as part of the Elkmerk Vardig meet, uh, I'm here at the Laumann Toyota World Museum. Now, you may notice that the cars uh, behind me at the moment are not all Toyotas, but what they represent, these belong to members of Elkmerk Wadig, what they represent is the different marks imported by Laumann, uh, mostly Toyota, but notably also um, Talbot Stroke Chrysler, um, Suzuki here, represented by this little Suzuki front which I entirely missed at Japan Classic Sunday last year. Fascinating little thing. This is the ancestor of the WizKid, so it's a little rear engine, 360cc. Uh, cutaway Lexus here, showing how the hybrid technology works, and MR2. So these represent everything that uh, Lohman did. Uh, Suzuki Kazashi is a, a great car to see on display in a museum. And uh, if we come in here, then, then we're into the cars that are actually owned by the collection, I think. So this is um, a uh, very performance orientated Toyota Supra, but weirdly one with an automatic transmission. Uh, we've got a Fassel Vega in here. This is a Fassel 2, big Chrysler V8 power, beautiful styling, very, very French. Uh, we've got some Lagondas here representing Great Britain, a Bentley. Uh, Sans Blower, a uh, Bentley Continental, a Flying Spur Saloon, and uh, a Phantom here on the end. But <laughs> look at this. It's a Toyota Mega Cruiser, a very little known attempt to rival, yes, the Humvee uh, with this extraordinary vehicle. Apart from knowing that it was inspired by the Hummer, I don't know a fat lot about them really. Um, quite cramped for what is. <laughs> such an enormous vehicle they must have the powertrain right there in the middle but uh yeah i love this and this is going to be an interesting tour the museum itself is more dedicated towards toyota so we've got a land cruiser here of the uh prado in some markets or colorado in others the toyota land cruiser station wagon line actually separated out from the basic um land cruiser and uh, this is what evolved into the later Amazon. Uh, I tested a 100 series Land Cruiser fairly recently. I love dainty little rear lights uh, fairly recently. And this is its granddad, effectively. Very popular in America, these. But e these are much earlier Land Cruisers. And you can more clearly see the uh, original Jeep influence, can't you? So this one dates from 1958. Uh, so later on, these developed into uh, the, the rugged Land Cruisers that Australians love so much. And the station wagons were a separate line entirely, even though this sort of is a station wagon. It's got a couple of little bench seats in the back. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a Land Cruiser this old in the metal before. And uh, I don't think I've ever seen a Corona pickup like this before either. Lovely. So we have test driven the Toyota Corona the one belonging to my friend Ferg. But this is the Ute version. Did they sell these in Australia, I wonder? I don't know. Just come here for the look at the rear lights. Just because I've never seen them, maybe you haven't either. But now we're going to progress into the main halls. So we've already been to the Laumann Museum at The Hague, uh, Den Haag. Uh, so there's a similar vibe going on with some of the automobile, the look and feel of the place. Oh, he, he just bought it from Innsbruck, just because he fancied it. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, there's not everything that's got explanations on it, I don't think. But as you can see, it's more than just a parking area for these cars. <laughs> Obviously some sort of crazy promotional vi uh, venture. I apologize, it really is very dark in here. Wow, that's beautiful. I think I'm about to be proved wrong, but not everything in here is a Toyota. <laughs> Clearly. What is this? Evertson Coupe. Wow. At the age of 13, Evert Lohmann, son of the collection's founder, began building this unusual special on a 300cc Lloyd twin cylinder two stroke chassis. Wow. Uh, the Lloyds are not particularly common. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, let's um, proceed to have a look around. Oh my gosh. Got, even got a little tea room here. 
Oh, can't be a museum without a little grey Fergie tractor. Um, that predates most grey Fergies. It's got solid rear wheels. Uh, got a Toyota, sorry, Lexus SC430. Toyota Crown Coupe. Uh, there's one of these in the UK. And uh, when I was in Australia, I drove a Crown sedan, much like this one, only with a steering wheel on a different size. We've got motorbikes here as well. I haven't seen any typewriters yet, but you know, it could be. Toyota Wheel. I drove one of those in New Zealand. Very unusual styling on the wheel. I mean, you, <laughs> the crown's pretty radical, but yeah, check that out. Like inspired by the Citroen Ami. Toyota Sora, rear wiper, massive rear lights with the badges within the rear lights. Lovely. Toyota BB. Although oh, this one's got a Scion badge on it. That was the uh, head of a sold in America as Scions. Based on the Yaris platform. I didn't know that. So that's good to know. Remarkable space. Toyota Sarah with the uh, butterfly doors as one of those out in the show. Cutaway Corolla Verso. Showing off the uh, practicality. It's quite clever, isn't it? It's sort of plexi plexiglass rear end. Hold on. Is there a typewriter? Yes. We are in luck. It's crazy. So the main Lauma Museum in The Hague is very much of this sort of vibe. It's all very dark, but uh, very artistically lit and they have recreation buildings just like this. Go and check out my video of that if you haven't already. That was back in 2019, I think. Yes, because it was the start of the Croatia trip. Look at this. A little continental. What's the body? It's on an Austin chassis. Wow. Yeah, like I say, you never know quite what to expect when you're here. Look at the uh, seating in that is absolutely gorgeous. This is a Kewit. What is a Kewit? Uh, electric, 1993. Wow. What real lights has it got? We need to know. Oh, the ones used on both caravans, I think. Oh, hmm. What, what real lights has the bus got? Are you realizing the fixation here? Not very much rear lighting. Well, so it did work in Scotland. Oh, here we go. This is looking much more totary. Wow. Boemi, Nakajima and Alonso. In that one, apparently. Got model cars as well. This is a 1964 Toyota Crown. The first Toyota in the Netherlands, apparently. Wow. But not the oldest Toyota. Uh, I think we will find there is elsewhere um, a much older one. I don't know where we'll see it today. A Toyota F1 car, a reminder that they did have a dabble in F1. They never quite managed to get it working. A Toyota Corona from 1965. Look again at the rear styling. Very, very clearly American inspired, I think. First Corolla, 1968. Uh, the uh, Tercel bringing front wheel drive to the Toyota range. 1958 Corona Toyo Pet. 1957. There we go, Toyo Pet being um, a name they were sold under for a time in Japan, I believe. That's a, another crown. So that name, the crown, has a very long history. Uh, the Sports 800. Fascinating little car. Little twin cylinder engine. 790 horsepower, but 45 brake horse. Sorry, 790cc. A Toyota Publica. Like a forerunner of the um, Corona. Look at the lift up rear side windows. 
so you get more air in. Well, I think effectively, yeah, that is the forerunner of the Corolla, I believe. Uh, Plug-in hybrids represented, we've got the first uh, Prius and the uh, later example, Yaris Grumman. More cutaways. There's a lot of work gone into these. Salika, of course. 1976 lift back and here is the non lift back version thereof oh wow the tercel i forgot it has this back end on it with the um really cute rear um lights a rear wiper mounted on the roof and a lift up rear window tailgate fascinating i've uh, got a parry dakar type um four by four up there your high look it was like the Hilux Surf. This is just an amazing place. Rally cars. That one looking like, yeah, Safari Rally spec with the height. It's got the higher air intake. What on earth is this? Paris Algier Dakar. To Holland. What's it based on? We may never know. <laughs> Another Hilux here. Five millionth shipped in 1989. There's the uh, camel livery. Wow. Oh, is this that exact car? That would be pretty cool. Uh, Corolla. The coupe thing. I don't, I don't think we've got those in the UK. The weird little addition window just after the front door. Starlets we did, Yaris's we did. There's a Toyota Thousand up there. Gosh. Wow. All of the Corollas of various types. With a starlet up the back there as well. Crazy. Got a 2000 GT. I actually know someone in the UK who owns one of these. Uh, did not make many of them. Incredible. Uh, Sprinter Truno, um, sold as the Corolla Coupe. Left-hand drive ones, pantograph wiper. Important detail noted. And look at this, this is a Toyota Classic. Uh, it was Toyota's attempt to build a PT Cruiser, but much larger and weirdly on the Hilux Surf chassis. I don't know if that includes four-wheel drive or not. It's just an incredibly oddball thing. You think they can't have made any money on that at all. Brilliant. Another Celica. Lovely uh, estate there. Crown wagon from 1971. Celica in brown. We've got a century there. The century sort of remained in production for about 20 years. Very, very little changed. That one is apparently in 1967, but I've driven one from the early 90s, which looked exactly the same. Uh, more uh, rare imports up at the back, an Xera, is it? Another big Crown Coupe. Later Crowns. NX by Will I Am. Well, there you go. And from the film iRobot, I think. Could be wrong, not very good on films. Right, let's go and see what's in here. Oh my gosh, a bit more varied stuff. I think they must shuttle some of the cars between the two museums. 
Look at that, that's like the worst limo in the world. <laughs> but it's turbocharged, so you know. There's a magnificent Chrysler Imperial. Uh, what is this one? Imperial. Pretty Imperial. A Jeep that's been stretched and turned into a limo. The old um, checker taxis that used to apply their trade in New York. Be the first. Jeep four-wheel drive uh, offers a unique opportunity. I wonder how many people took it up. Uh, old fire engine. It's a Leyland from the north of England. Got some interesting controls in there. But I guess, you know, you'd want a hand throttle so you could keep the pump running, wouldn't you? Suzuki Alto. We didn't get one with that sort of a hatchback on. We got the ones where it was just a glass screen on a five-door body shell. Uh, another WizKid SC100. Cappuccino, we've seen one of those outside. And some old carriages as well. Some weird Suzuki motorbike, which is very of its time. Well, Ah, oh, DeSoto. It was a Plymouth luxury brand, I think. Could be wrong. Often am. Dodge Viper. Oh, I should take a photo of that for the boy. And that looks like a Toyota branded hot air balloon capsule. Interesting. Wow, what a remarkable space. Ooh, we've got a Daimler Conquest Roadster here up the back. That is an unusual car. I think Mr. Lohman has um, unusual tastes. I wish I fully approve and the uh, full Lohman Museum is well worth checking out because of those unusual tastes. Wow. I believe Standard Triumph and uh, Morgan are brands he also imported. Crazy. Well, well, what an absolutely amazing place. Uh, well worth checking out if you um, like Toyotas, or even if you don't, there's some fascinating cars here, and I wish I had a bit more time to have a bit more look in detail, but definitely worth checking out, as is the um, main Lauman collection uh, in The Hague. But uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyable. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in a future video. Bye.